So I'm going to share with you, in my opinion, five things that millennials must do when they go to the island of Nevis. Number one. If you've started doing research, you've probably already heard about the famous killer bee drink. Yes, this is at a place called Sunshine's. It's like a shack-like looking restaurant that's painted in the usual colors you see um, representing like Rastafarians, green, yellow, and red. And then right next to it, or right in front of it rather, is a bar and then the beach. Now they're known for their killer bee drinks, which are really tasty. The one that I got was not that strong. And I remember thinking like, don't believe the hype. But then the second day that I came back, it was Bella. If your drink is not strong enough, if it doesn't taste like it has an extra kick in it, I suggest you just tap the bartender and ask him if he can hook you up. I'm sure he'll be down. On the reviews, these people love the food, so it's worth a try. A lot of reviews saying like how grand the food is and how great it was. We just ate sunshine. It was. I'm assuming that message was from the tourists, and I do think this is a more tourist focused location. Being someone who grew up having West Indian food made in the house, it was cool but I more so appreciated like the local cuisine. So definitely check out Sunshines, because if you go to Nevis and you talk to your friends about it who might have been to Nevis, everyone's gonna ask you about Sunshines and you don't want to be the person left out. But I highly suggest going with a group of friends and you'll definitely see locals there. That's one thing that I really appreciated. There were locals there and it wasn't like a whole load of tourists. I'm not a big sightseer type of person usually, but I do generally appreciate history. And if you're one of those people who want some really good IG, like Instagram shots, this is the place to go. Heritage Village. What I really appreciated about this place was it showed the evolution of how families grew up, like post-emancipation. Basically, the freed slaves were only allowed, well, they didn't have any money. Look, you just came out of slavery, right? So of course they had to live on the plantation, but they were limited on the size of the houses that they could have. My grandmother who ended up growing up in one of those one room houses, which blew me away. I get like the freed slaves growing up in a one room house, but then my grandmother, and it was crazy because I was just able to see how my mom grew up. She showed me the type of iron, for example, that she used to use, like a brass looking iron that you had to put coal in and put it on this, the stove to use it. She showed me the type of stove that she used, the type of house that she came in. I just really appreciated the exhibits that were exact examples of these things. And it just was like, it made you think. It gave you a sense of appreciation for all that your parents have accomplished. It was just interesting perspective and it gave me a sense of just pride and more drive to really like take over this world. <laughs> oh, and then the pictures. Did I tell y'all the pictures that I got? Check them out. Bam, 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 and but yes, a two for y'all. History, and then some great, awesome Instagram pictures. Number three. Now apparently there's this body of water called the Hot Springs, and everyone goes there for like therapeutic healing. There's like mineral aspects in the water that are supposed to offer healing for like any ailments or anything like that that you have. Um, which was interesting to me. It is boiling hot, y'all. <laughs> boiling, boiling hot. But the dope thing about it is I had gone out one night and I heard a lot of people planning and making plans to go to the hot springs. Like, it was almost like an after spot type thing, which was interesting. <laughs> My sister went and she said there were a lot of locals. It sounded like it was an everyday thing, but I think that is definitely a must check out. Cause once again, you're gonna go to Nevis and people are gonna be like, oh, but did you visit the hot springs? And your answer gonna be no. And they're gonna look at you like you crazy, son. All right, Culturama. So my personal recommendation, and this is just based on my experience, but my personal recommendation is to go during Culturama. The reason why I really appreciated my experience was because I was able to get the best of both worlds. Everything that Nevis is known for as far as relaxation, culture, um, history, beautiful sights, and then the festival. 
So, Culturama, for those of you who don't know, once again, I said it's kind of like their version of Carnival. Usually just a little bit more culture, um, history culture embodied in it. It's like weeks and weeks of events, but just like any other Carnival, there's one main week where everyone's really there. Like people come over from the island of St. Kitts um, and other islands, family comes back home to celebrate. So the events that I attended, I didn't go to everything, but I'm gonna tell you what my favorites were. So Juve was my favorite. So for those of you who don't know what Juve is, it's pretty much the celebration of emancipation once again. Apparently, the masters, as disrespectful as they were, used to dress up and make fun of the slaves and like play music and stuff like that. So when they were freed, Carnival or Juve, sorry, uh, was pretty much the freed slaves now making fun of their masters, making fun of them. And so they would dress up, um, there's, there's, look into it, but there's like a whole assortment of costumes <laughs> that represent these masters. So there's different bands that you can jump up in, right? I jumped with the core band. So they did the long jump. And what the long jump pretty much does is they go all the way from like, village to village to village to village on their way down to town and as they pass every village you can hear them <laughs> you can hear the music until so everyone runs out and you literally see people like coming from the side streets and going up the middle into the band to jump with them now you can definitely like uh get a t-shirt sign up with the group you can just jump in as a regular person which i did i just jumped in as a regular person but just imagine paint lots of paint lots of water being sprayed from a hose um, and just people just jumping, just having the best time of their lives, just free and care, carefree and like just spirited. By the way, shout outs to the core band. They had this song that they just kept playing over and over again, but I loved it. It was like a soca version of Old Town Road. I'm gonna take my horse to the Old Town Road. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more. always love Juve but I highly recommend that um, and when everyone gets down to town it's like music dancing depending on where you are there might be some water too everyone's eating it's just a beautiful sight to see <sighs> okay it's no secret that I love food so when they have the food festival y'all definitely had to go to that and I was excited shout, shout out to Culturama because I did an Instagram takeover for them which was awesome because I got to interact with all of you guys talk to you guys, answer your questions, introduce you to new foods. But my favorites was conky. It's like sweet potato, coconut, grated, cinnamon, spice, nutmeg, and it's all like steamed in a, in a couple other ingredients. And it's all like steamed in a banana leaf. It is so good. I also really loved, you're not gonna understand this. I know, cause I didn't understand it. The ribs. May I tell you the way West Indians season? That's the part I forgot. The way they season. Some of the best ribs, barbecue ribs I've ever had in my life. There was also conch soup, goat water, passion fruit juice, sea moss, sorrel, tamarind juice. Have all the juices, just drink. That's literally what I was doing. And I highly recommend like bringing one to two other friends and splitting dishes with them. There was a lot of food, guys. I just recommend trying everything. What I loved about the space and the environment is it was like all ages, mostly adults, but like just the way you would expect a food festival to be. Just a lot of people out looking nice. And even the premier was there hanging out. By the way, premier equals prime minister, what you guys usually think. But it's just that because St. Kitts and Nevis are sister islands, they have the prime minister. And then the premier is basically the name for the prime minister of Nevis. So Food Fest and Juve were my favorite personally. And lastly, take a trip to St. Kitts. It's a 30 minute boat ride. If you get to go to St. Kitts, you gotta hit up the strip. Now, the only thing I will say is if it's during Culturama, everything is dead. But the strip is just basically a line of restaurants with um, that are like open layout restaurants it's right next to the beach. Like, I don't know, if you're like me, I just always like to see locals who are like my age, like hanging out. That's something that I have to see no matter where I go. All in all, like I loved my time in Nevis. It had everything that I needed, like 
Uh, actually, everything that I think millennials need, like relaxation, history and culture, and then fun. So, once again, if you're heading to Nevis, these are the things that I enjoyed and I recommend checking out. And I'll list a couple of links below. Really quick shout outs to um, Culturama and Nevis Tourism for welcoming me. This is not a sponsored video. However, they were so kind to me and I really enjoyed the time. I enjoyed doing that Instagram takeover. So I just want to give a shout out to them right quick. Okay, boy. <laughs> Comment below if you're Puerto Rican. <laughs> you're okay with me singing this song. Awesome. Follow me on Instagram for more Chaz Gems and join my monthly mailing list to get new videos, new exclusive videos, and updates on the next Chaz Chats event.